we have uh, Dmitry Maksimichev, His Excellency, the Ambassador of the Russian Federation to Kenya, in studio with us on 98.4 Capital FM. Good morning, uh, Your Excellency. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Capital FM. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, we, we were listening to Martin Kimani, Kenya's ambassador to the UN speech. It, it really, really caused a, a, a buzz on Twitter. Um, and I'm just, I'm just wondering, you have written extensively, actually, for the Daily Nation, I was reading, um, about colonization. What, what is your definition of colonialism? We're going straight in. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, first, uh, first, I would like to thank you, uh, dear friends, uh, for inviting me here and uh, for a very uh, precious uh, opportunity to have uh, the Russian point of view, Russian perspective heard uh, by the Kenyan public. This is greatly appreciated. And um, as far as colonialism is concerned, uh, well, the definition of colonialism is uh, exploitation of one nation by another, of a weaker nation by a stronger nation. And uh, so this is our understanding uh, in this sense. I would probably disagree with Ambassador Kimani, respectfully, uh, that uh, uh, I don't think that uh, the colonial narrative is uh, really uh, relevant uh, to the issue that was being discussed, that is the crisis in Ukraine. And uh, so, uh, because we never colonized anyone, I mean, Russia uh, is, is a great country is a big it has been uh, it was an empire for uh, many years however it was not a colonial empire it was an inclusive empire Uh, of course we had problems with uh, with our uh, the constituent peoples of uh, of russia however it was never colonization it was always uh, not only uh cohabitation but also co-development because not a single uh, people got extinct in Russia. Um, but Your Excellency, I, I, I would define uh, colonialism as the, the policy or practice of acquiring full or partial political control over another country, occupying it with settlers, exploiting it economically. I'm not talking about the past, I'm talking about right now. How is what Russia is doing in Ukraine any different? Uh, well. This is an independent, uh, sovereign state. They, yes. they, they, they voted for their own independence. Yes, and uh, uh, we in fact agreed with that. It was a, a collective decision. Uh, so what's changed? In '92, uh, nothing has changed. They are uh, an independent, and we are not exploiting them. And I, I think the question, maybe, to, just to be more pointed, <coughs> yeah. what and, and in layman's terms, because I think there is a lot of this is the reason, that's the reason, this has happened, that's happened. What is the reason for the invasion in Ukraine as, as basically and as in, in the most layman way you can explain it to us? What is the reason that Russia has invaded Ukraine? A great first thing uh, that uh, it is not an invasion uh, because uh, people talk and we hear it all over the place on the radio and we read it every day. It's called full scale or what? what full it, scale. It, full scale, scale uh, invasion. In, invasion. War, yeah. It is not because it is a limited um, it is a limited uh, military uh, operation, special military operation. This is the official term. If you look at the numbers, uh, there are there is a very limited uh, contingent of Russian troop, troops uh, that take part in it. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, it has uh, uh, the, the reasons for it are, have been uh, explained quite clearly by President Putin. It is uh, first, it is demilitarization uh, of Ukraine. Second, it is denazification of Ukraine. Third, 
It is the protection of uh, the people of uh, the Lugansk and Donetsk regions mm -hmm. from genocide and extermination. This is majority Russian regions, right? Yes. Russian speaking and Russian people in these yeah, regions, it's, right? Yeah, uh, well, I will come to that. Okay. <laughs> but, but, but when you say... Uh, no, no, no. And uh, the third thing, it is also, uh, it is also um, the... Um, addressing the security concerns of Russia itself because there are legitimate security concerns because of NATO uh, exploiting the territory of Ukraine over the last few years. And uh, there has been an escalation in this activity. So uh, these are the goals, the reasons. You asked for the reasons. Yeah. Uh, it would be, I think, a little bit superficial to look at the situation starting just uh, on the 24th of February, because it is, you have to look at it in, uh, in perspective. You have to look at it in the context. The context that the, the acute phase uh, of, the, uh, of the Ukrainian crisis uh, started in 2014, when there was uh, a violent armed coup d'etat that was supported from abroad with active participation of uh, Germany, France, Sweden, Poland, and the rest of the European Union, and uh, of course the United States of America. Uh, and it was a violent coup d'etat, and the people were killed in the middle of Kiev. And since then, uh, the democratically elected president Yanukovych was overthrown. He had to flee. Uh, and uh, the whole situation started deteriorating in a very uh, disturbing direction because the predominant uh, feeling and the predominant philosophy of those who committed uh, the coup d'etat was... Uh, extreme right nationalism bordering on nazism and, and this is the denazification and, and demilitarization that is, uh, demilita uh, demilitarization but is ukraine really a threat from a military uh, perspective look uh, ukraine is a big country you heard it from uh, the ukrainian ambassador the other day uh, it is um, uh, it basically it is comparable not only to Kenya, but to France, too, or Poland. And these are big countries and powerful countries. Their uh, armed forces are second largest in Europe, right after us. Uh, and uh, so they are about uh, three to 400,000 people, armed, uniformed personnel. So and uh, over the last few years, they have been stuffed uh, with uh, uh, the most sophisticated Western uh, weapons. And it would have been all right. Of course, it is a little bit disturbing, but uh, there was a clear intention by NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, uh, to actually deploy more and more facilities, uh, military facilities in the territory of Ukraine, uh, which uh, in uh, which already constituted a threat to us because NATO, uh, we had enough, uh, we have had enough trouble discussing uh, with NATO uh, the issue of their uh, expansion, eastward expansion closer to our borders and Ukraine is exactly on our border and if NATO with its weapons expands to us it it does create a serious threat because a missile launched from uh, for example Kharkov uh, can reach Moscow within minutes and is NATO setting up in your opinion or in Russia's opinion to keep Russia in check is that why that that border is so it important? is not clear because we have uh, we have been talking to them since the early 90s because uh, when the soviet union uh, broke up and uh, the constituent republics 
of uh, of the Soviet Union became independent and it was a consensus decision by everyone there was no liberation fight no liberation struggle uh, they just said okay fine we we prefer to to, to go it alone and Russia agreed with that next uh, even before that <laughs> sorry uh, Russia agreed to reunification of Germany uh, because there were two Germanys, as you know, the Federal Republic of Germany and the German Democratic Republic. And we had a big uh, force stationed uh, in East Germany. It was um, about 600,000 people stationed there just to contain possible aggression from NATO. But it was in Berlin, I mean, the, the current capital, it was the capital of the GDR, and uh, uh, sorry, I, I no, no. just finished yeah, the yeah. phrase. I, yeah, uh, sure. Uh, and uh, so we removed, we withdrew, we agreed to the reunification, and we withdrew from Germany, and we also withdrew our troops uh, from Czechoslovakia, from Poland, from Hungary. Uh, basically, it was done uh, uh, in good will. Uh, because we intended uh, to build a new uh, Europe without uh, walls, without uh, uh, divisions. And without the USSR, obviously, right, as well. Uh, yes, as and as then the Soviet federal Union federal itself, yeah. it uh, just uh, bro bro sure. broke up. And yeah. uh, But since then, since and we were given assurances that NATO would not move its military infrastructure to our, to our borders because everybody was too happy to have our troops go back home. Sure. Sure. But but yeah, go on. I think I think we might take a little bit of a break as um, and we'll come back and talk uh, more on this with um, with yourself. Uh, His Excellency Dmitry Maksimichev, the ambassador.